welcome back to the Daily Rundown uh, with something to say time now. My guests have joined me. I just want to say a quick thanks to the ladies from Waspy. Don't forget, if you do want more information, give that a quick Google. The demo's this Wednesday, the 29th of June. So if something you feel strongly about, do either try and get along or give them your support. So yes, it's something to say time. David and Nina are back with something along the lines of a rant or a call to arms or they're going to enlighten us in some way, I believe. Who's going first? Uh, am I going first? Yeah, go ahead. Ladies first. Ladies Ladies first, oh, is there you go. Is not um, dead. <laughs> I my something to say is a couple of things actually. I think I've been a little bit upset, as I'm sure many people have, about the sort of outpouring of um, racist comments, things on Twitter, the Brexit aftermath, the Brexit aftermath. And I think um, all the people um, from government are certainly saying we should come together and we should t talk and we nobody should get to excited and I think a lot of the outpouring is to do with the unhappiness that they've maybe felt in their own communities right that has led them to leave but I do think that um, you know there might be some more underlying issues going on personally if you feel the need to take to Twitter or e even worse circumstances to directly give some racist abuse. And one story that I found today, which was a bit of a nice story, I thought, was about um, dealing with mental health. <laughs> I like how you segued. And also you like, I don't need to spell that. We've linked those people to mental health now. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone goes home and sees those tweet, tweets and Facebooks. Go on, anyway. <laughs> with mental health uh, with, with laughter and how we can deal with some of the more <laughs> difficult things in our lives in a more constructive way right. than perhaps tweeting or direct abuse. And, and comedy, I think, I'm a comedian, I think that is a great way to do it. I think there's, it's a great platform to be able to stand up and talk about these things and kind of poke fun at the way we're all behaving at the moment. Yeah. And there's a brilliant um, blog going on this week if people want to have a look at it through the Huffington Post. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, of course, yeah, otherwise how will they find it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> through Huffington Post um, and it's comedians talking about their mental health and um, discussing how comedy has kind of saved them. And there's some really there's some comedians who I know and love greatly, uh, Jonathan Mayer, Harriet Dyer, Susan Kalman. They're all talking about their mental health problems and how comedy um, has kind of been quite therapeutic for them in um, rather than going under and is, getting is on top. Isn't that interesting? And how would it, like, can I ask, as it manifested with those examples that you've used? And because it's not the first, we do, we do hear quite a lot of links or references, you know, kind of, comedians that suffer maybe sad clown depression. is that the expression yeah yeah the I mean, sad clown Robin syndrome Williams, um, I think I, refer to I think where, wherever there's a kind of stereotype there's a there's a grain of truth in it I mean it, you've met a lot of comedians on this show we've had loads of comedians on this show I, yeah. we, I think there's there's a grain of truth I've certainly lots lots <laughs> I've certainly you know I'm I'm kind of happy to say I've suffered from depression and when I had a kind of episode of depression and I was working with a counsellor doing some um, cognitive behavioural therapy, one of the things that I decided to do was that one of my goals in life would be to do a bit of stand up and here I am now really? and it's my job. Really? So it yeah. came from that? Yes. What, what, what is the, what's the link do you think? What is it a, a form of expression? Is it a way for someone to express themselves where they feel that they can somehow or in other parts of their life or what do you feel is the... Yeah I think there? there's, there's um, I think a lot of people that suffer from mental health don't go into comedy, obviously. A lot of ordinary people suffer from mental health and it's a way, and feel different in that and feel that they somehow don't fit mm. or they're in some way broken or there's something wrong with them and I think comedy is a great place where you, you know the the uh, the more different you are the better anyway right so it's just a whole positive slant on that side of things yeah, yeah yeah I do I do so I think I think not I think mental health is a massive issue in this country and mm. it's not you know clearly there are not enough stand-up clubs in the world to deal with that <laughs> this <laughs> things to be doing but I do think right, but the NHS of, I think they're looking into it yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're doing something with the comedy store apparently <laughs> but I think it, no I think it's a great it's a, a, a great way to deal with feeling different and I think it's fabulous that these comedians that I know and love are kind of standing up and saying 
and being quite open about it well, that's and breaking down part, the stigma it? of it, I yeah. think. That's another important part, even if it's not to, um, I don't know, get somebody actually involved, to be um, a personality, you know, or be a high profile comedian or, and someone that people know, it's always good to, op to be open about these kinds yeah. of things. And, and mental health is one of the biggest taboos still. I think still, having a discussion about whatever's bothering us is always the best way to deal with it, whether it but be this on is stage. Why you have something to say. Nina. Yes, oh, no, rather, here. but rather than um, your anger coming out in aggressive ways towards people that are innocent, and that's how I'm kind of trying to segue what's going on with the with the um, outpouring. Because there have been. I mean, I don't know, David. You know, you're on Twitter as well. We've probably you've probably seen some of them. There has been a very disturbing mm -hmm. reaction in some parts. To, to social Brexit, media world, yeah. Yeah. to Brexit, um, there, and my husband's at the Euros at the moment, and he said he was in an English bar or a bar, sorry, a bar in France, and a lot of English fans came in, and they just made up their own chant while they were there. Uh, just very kind of, I, mean, I can't say it here, but like yeah. very aggro kind of, you know, we're not in Europe, we don't need you, we don't need people mm -hmm. in Europe, but using more colourful language, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's a very, it's a strange one, isn't it? Though, lots of kind of racist reactions are much more worse than that. I think uh, it's legitimised some well. of those. Uh, sadly, I think the campaign legitimised some of those values <laughs> and some of those. I'm not saying everyone it's, it's who voted to leave. And to be fair to like the people who did vote leave and the people who campaigned for leave, this doesn't represent all of them no, either. No, not at all. Um, it's, it's a bad thing for them to be tired with, though. Um, or to be connected I, I to. I think you've got to look at England from. I have a lot of friends from Europe who actually claim that England is the least racist country in the whole of this hemisphere. Oh, that's a nice thing in fact, thing France mm. and Germany and Holland and all those countries that are a lot more racist and hostile to foreigners than people in England mm. ever. And mm. in fact, uh, you know, there's a small number of people, I mean, um, first thing, I don't think people uh, voted to leave the European Union, anything to do with that. Uh, there were some people concerned about immigration, but Americans are concerned about immigration, Canadians are concerned about it. everybody's concerned about it. They want to keep it under control because you've only got so much money. I think uh, there were some people um, who, who, who the, we, you're going to get in every country, uh, in Italy, when they make monkey sounds, when Sean Wright Phillips, the, the ex-Manchester City player, would go out Mm -hmm. Or in Spain, this happens in these countries. You don't get that in England. And our footballers, football fans, can be a bit drunk and rowdy, but they're less offensive than the ones on the continent. I don't know about that. Have you ever been to an English football game? I don't know. Maybe I was just shocked. Maybe I was innocent. I've, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I went to five, five Man United uh, matches this year. I very much enjoyed it at the mm -hmm. Theatre of Dreams, and I'm an Arsenal supporter. Um, but so I'll defend in a way. I, I will say that overall. I think England, I only know England of the four, you know Ireland. Uh, I lived I, in Scotland I, for 15 years. Well, I've only been there for two days. But from what I know of England, mainly in London and uh, Manchester, is I find uh, the English probably more welcoming, young and old, than any people uh, uh, in the whole of Europe. Almost like North Americans. Um, who are used to having lots of people come in and you know uh, every generation 200,000 people come in a year. We're a country is built, my country is built on immigrants as is America. Uh, obviously European countries aren't but they found it's a, actually a lot harder in the continent. You can see um, with this wave of, of migrants that came in the, the, the problems in Germany uh, with the mass demonstrations against them and Hungary and all these countries, something that doesn't happen here actually. Apart from the English Defence League, and, and, and they're, they're, they're minor compared with anything you've got on the continent. So I, I would say um, that it's, I'm not as worried about that because you get these people in every country. And I would say the English are the least insular and the most open people of Europeans, of people in Europe, and, uh, and maybe the English and the French. And, and I think the, the more you get into Central and Eastern Europe, the more people, insular people are. And I think that's to do with us being on the Atlantic coast. And I suppose the thing about this one as well is, unfortunately, social media always gives a voice to these people as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? And, I mean, and to be fair, there's, probably, there's been both sides of the campaign, I think, have come out with some... But laughter, praise, not but hate. But ultimately, that's what I was going to say. Give you the last line there. Laughter, yeah. not hate. That's a good one to go out on. Laughter, not hate. Uh, sort it out. I will. We'll do a benefit. Thanks very much for that, Nina. We're going to go for our last break of the evening. When we come back, we've got David something to say and some of the slightly more unusual stories that have been making the news today as well. See you soon. <laughs>